Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room. Yeah. I moved this over to the left side now. That way I've got the other one sort of sitting in the back there. I mean, it kind of makes for interesting perspectives, doesn't it? The world of tam-tamism. Anyway, let's go, let's go, let's just do it here. This is our next big pile. Eek, there it is. Some really cool stuff in here. I need some really good stuff in here. First, we begin with some stuff we've talked about before. Shostakovich playing his own piano concertos and other goodies. Um, some preludes and fugues and fantastic dances and whatnot, which I have like, I don't know how many copies of this and we already talked about it. So I don't know why there's another one there. It just accumulated. Oh, this is wonderful. Piano Concertos 1 and 2 with Shedrin, Shedrins. And you have to get the sh, sh. You know, there's a letter in Russian that's a sh, 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 a double S-H-C-H thing. So it's Shedrin's Piano Concerto number 2, which nobody ever does, with Marc-André Amelin, the great Marc-André Amelin with Andrew Litton and the BBC Scottish Symphony. This is fabulous. Oh, it's so good. The only reason it's in the overflow room is because I have like millions of recordings of these and had to stick it somewhere, but I know where it is. I mean, it's wonderful. Uh, Shostakovich fifth with the Age of Gold Suite. All right, this fifth is Andre Previn's first with the LSO. And uh, oh yeah, it's, it's with the LSO. I wonder, by the way, this, which one this is. And the Age of Gold Suite with Chicago Symphony and Stokowski, which also remember he did Shostakovich's sixth with them. Um, so, yeah, that's wonderful to have, but I'm, I'm wondering if this is one of the basic uh, 100 things. No, rats. I did the notes for a lot of this series, but by the time they got to Shostakovich, we'd had our parting of ways, which was a separate video. <laughs> How that happened, um, and someone else did them. Okay, anyway, Previn's LSO Shostakovich V was better than his remake. Um, it's a wonderful performance with a particularly intense account of the Largo slow movement. And it's wonderfully played, and it really was powerful. And back in the day, um, in the like '60s, when you know these things were out, this was recorded in 1960 something. They won't tell us when, I'm sure, um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, back in the '60s, this was like the big Western competition to Leonard Bernstein's, or at least in. in I, I mean, there were other Shostakovich's fifths around, but these were kind of the the hot ones. Um, they really were. And you had Bernstein's New York Phil first one and the Previn, and they were very different performances, and that was really nice. And of course, there was Ormandy, and there was a bunch of other people around too. But yeah, very good. And we've got this box The Complete Symphonies with Maris Janssen's, uh, with a bunch of orchestras. You've got, let's see, Bavarian Radio, the Berlin Philharmonic, the London Philharmonic, the Oslo Philharmonic, the St. Petersburg Philharmonic. Philadelphia Orchestra, the Pittsburgh Symphony, and the Vienna Philharmonic. <whistles> Actually, I mean, Jensen's was always a very solid and, and capable Shostakovich conductor. Um, and this is fun because it has all these different orchestras in the music. And there are some really marvelous things in here. I mean, the Philadelphia ones are great. I think that's four and ten. Um, and, and, you know, Pittsburgh. And you hear Vienna do it is lots of fun. And... Bavarian Radio seems to me the least interesting of the bunch in Shostakovich. But you've got Berlin for number one. Let's see what the uh, LPO is number 15. Um, Bavarian Radio is number two. Bavarian Radio is number 12 and number three and number 14. Um, oh, and they're number four, but it's a good number four. Actually, I, 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 I reversed myself on that one. Uh, the Gadfly bit is the Romance and Folk Feast is London Phil. Symphony number five is Vienna. Um, number six is Oslo. I remember that. Number seven is Leningrad, which is always a good thing to do. Number seven is the Leningrad Symphony. It's their symphony. It's an exciting performance. Uh, number eight is Pittsburgh. Yes, and that's quite splendid. And you get a rehearsal sequence with that too. Um, number nine is Oslo. Number 10 was Philadelphia. There we go. Um, and number 11, the Jazz Suite, number one, and the Waltz from number two, and the Tahiti Trot are all Philly. Philadelphia, which is wonderful, and 13 is Bavarian Radio. But on the whole, it's it's a powerful and exciting symphony cycle. Um, uh, one of the best things that Janssen's did, it really is. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that they were able to like piece it all together. So I have some singleton performances from there too. So we'll, 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 we'll hit those. 
when we uh, encounter them. Oh, Shostakovich 4 and 10 with Philly and Ormandy. These are great. The fourth was the one that a lot of us imprinted on because, again, it was the only performance of this in the West. I mean, Ormandy so seldom gets the credit he deserves because, you know, he was rather conservative. He didn't do a lot of avant-garde stuff. But, you know, nowadays that's a badge of honor. You like preserved music from those people. So that's good. But more than that, um, he was really, really on top of things when it came to doing premieres of major works by living composers who were, you know, more traditional. And so, yes, we have Shostakovich 4, which is absolutely fantastic, um, exciting and quick and, and, and really woke us up to that piece. And the 10th, a tremendously underrated performance of number 10. It's a very, very fine performance. Wonderfully played with a terribly messed up timing in the finale here. 17 minutes and 42 seconds. Ugh! No, it's like 12 minutes. You know, I mean, they, they don't pay much attention to little tiny details like proofreading. Yeah. So. But yeah, Ormandy Shostakovich was always good, except for his first fifth, which was rather strange, but his remake was better. All right, Shostakovich 4, another wonderful one with Slatkin in St. Louis. He did 4 and 8, I believe, in St. Louis. I have them here. We'll get to them, I'm sure. Um, and it's really first class, wonderfully well played, brilliantly recorded. I mean, Slatkin is an ace in Russian music. He always was. So yeah, it's a keeper. Another keeper, Shostakovich four. Oh look, another four. This is with Yarvi, Scottish National. And it's just smoking like his other recordings of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Particularly the finale, which is just annihilatingly powerful and exciting. And yes. 7 and 11 with Berglund. Well, we just did the Berglund box, didn't we? Now, the Leningrad Symphony was, again, one of those, those early recordings of Shostakovich. We didn't have a lot of choice. And I remember having this on an import EMI CD, which was really good sound. I mean, the bass could have been a little more solid. That was when EMI sort of had wah, 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 wobbly bass. But still, um, it was an exciting performance. And the 11th is a knockout. Stunning, amazing. I remember when it came out, I mean, everyone was like, who the hell is Pavel Berglund? And it was available as an EMI import with number six. And it was like just extraordinary, amazing performance on luscious, fabulous European yummy vinyl, good pressing that sounded just incredible. It was just before digital stuff started coming out when EMI really had hit its stride making fabulous, fabulous recordings. And that 11th was just, whew. It really sort of taught a lot of us number 11 as well, because no one was paying attention to it by then. Ah, Charles McHarris with the, which is the Royal Phil doing Shostakovich 5 and Festive Overture, like everything McHarris does. It's so incredibly musical and right, and it's as if it plays itself, and it's just, it's just terrific. I mean, I, you know, someday, some year, somehow, someone's got to get all of this stuff together and stuff it in a box. We just have to do it. We, we just got to do it. Then we've got, oh, this is the other Previn one, his EMI stuff. Number four with Chicago, which is wonderful. It's my favorite Shostakovich fourth, I think, overall, or one of them. I mean, it's just devastating. Uh, Britain 4C interludes from Peter Grimes. Of course, that was one of his LSO things. Um, and the other, Pasakalia from Peter Grimes and Symphonia de Requiem, the rest of that, that disc. And then his Shostakovich five remake with Chicago. The other stuff is LSO. And the number five remake is not as good as his LSO first one. It's good, it's good, but it's not, not as powerful and as intense as his London Symphony recording. Then we've got number seven with Yarvi. Oh, Scottish National, it's really, really exciting. Oh my God, it's exciting and it's loud and it's not always 100% together, but we, we don't care because it's just, oh, just amazing. Just amazing. I mean, you know, let's, let's not mince words. Then we've got Gurgiev. Gurgiev, remember, his ass got canned, ha ha, with, with the Kirov Orchestra, Mariinsky Theater, St. Petersburg, doing numbers five and nine. All right, they're good. They're decent. Um, I hung on to them because they're decent, but I don't play them, not because Gurgiev is Gurgiev, but because there's just many other better ones, quite frankly. Um, I have never was never a fan of the Mariinsky recordings on Phillips. They were not sonically all that good. And um, the orchestra was a so-so orchestra. It always was. Anyway, so there we have it. That's the next clump of Shostakovich. That's our 
our 10th video in the Shostakovich Overflow Room series. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.